we just posted our Alpha Cool Ice Wolf build up and then following that posted the review of it. But the big thing there is we still needed something similar to compare against and that is what we're building up today. This is an EK solution that hooks into the EK280 Predator XLC cooler and it's also just like the Alpha Cool one, a semi custom loop solution with quick release tubes. So we're going to be looking at that today. We're building it and then the review will come pretty immediately after. This content though is brought to you by AMD and their RX 480. Conveniently, EK also makes an RX 480 water block that you can buy and hook into the same Predator XLC. So if you want to liquid cool your 480, then there is an option for that. And just to remind everyone, we did a liquid cooled 480 some months ago and saw that there was actually an overclocking potential increase that we got out of it. And that's pretty standard with these solutions, whether it's a 480 or a 1080 or whatever. With the GTX 1080 here in front of me, Founders Edition card and the Ice Wolf cooler from Alpha Cool, we were able to get not much, but about a 10 megahertz extra overclock on the thing. And then, and that's over another liquid solution, mind you. So the overclock over reference is actually quite substantial. But over another liquid solution, it was 10 megahertz. We were hitting something like 21, 13 megahertz max clock rate in gaming scenarios. It's pretty damn high. And that was thanks to liquid with air it can't do nearly as well unless you blast the VRM fan at 100%. So that's what these things help with. Now, of course, the value is always what we talk about in the review because value is not necessarily great with this type of project, but it is an enthusiast project. And that means that you're doing it at least partly because you want to, and that's as good a reason as any. So we're installing this one just to kind of point it out, the 481 right here and the 1081 in my right hand. That's what we've got to work with. I'll probably be doing that one shortly. Uh, but we're starting with the 1080 today just because I've already got data on it for other cooling solutions. Uh, so that's what they've got. These are the same overall design. <clears throat> and uh, basically we end up with the contact plate here. And this is all uh, just going to conduct completely from the inductors here. We've got inductor contact. We have MOSFET contact. We have uh, VRAM contact here around the GPU, of course, GPU contact, and then capacitor bank contact. So this will, it's, it's a full coverage water block, basically. This is a proper full coverage water block, uh, and it's a bit different from Alpha Cool's Ice Wolf in that regard. So we're gonna connect this to the 1080. The hard work's been done, it's already torn down. It's been torn down a million times now. It's probably feeling a little bit beaten up at this point. So we're attaching this, things to note, as previously, I've got thermocouples attached to the card, to the PCB. It's one on the backside here. It's not really going to interfere with the conductivity that much to a backplate if we install one. And then on the front side, this one kind of needs to be resecured. Obviously, it's a bit loose, but that's going to touch the third MOSFET up from the bottom, and that'll give us our MOSFET reading. So that'll go right there. The adhesive is getting a bit dry though, but I will, uh, I'll fix that as we go through. So just to show off the tube system before we get into installation, this is what I was talking about in our Alpha Cool Ice Wolf coverage. When I said that their tubes, which I have right here, just to show you and remind you, I said their tubes were pretty bad. This is what I was working with. You unscrew this to do the disconnect. It's not exactly a quick disconnect. It's kind of a quick disconnect. It's more prone to leaking by accident than the EK version, and uh, it's got some quality control issues. EK's version is the one that I said is far better, but also you pay a bit more for them. And we'll cover this more in the review, but just to really quickly show you how it works, it's pretty damn cool. Hit the switch, and there it is. It disconnected. It's not going to leak. There's like one tiny drop of liquid on there. Uh, but that's it. There's no real risk of leaking at all. Disconnect it, and then we would disconnect this one over here on the... Uh, CPU cooler. So this, if when we're done with the installation, you take this cooler and we would disconnect just like that. And then you hook them together and you end up with a semi-custom loop. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now, not quite as effective as a custom open loop, but also much easier and probably a bit more accessible for some people. Okay, so let's get started for this. We've got thermal pads from EK. These are uh, the blue pads that came with it. There's a few things here. These are cut to size a bit better than the Alpha Cool Ice Wolf ones. These pads go on the uh, VRAM, and then the rest of the pads that we have will go on the VRM components. 
So to apply these, we peel off the plastic from both sides, and then you just drop it onto the VRAM module. And we're gonna do that seven more times. I'm gonna tap my anti-static wrist strap that's grounded to the ESD mat, and then into the wall just for good measure, working with this stuff in cold and dry weather, which is not good for static electricity. I need like a better way to peel this. Yes, they are a bit stickier. Yeah. Yeah, those are better. So these are stickier than the Alpha Cool ones, which is nice. Big fan of that. Okay, that's the VRAM thermal pads done. You should expect these to take about one hour per thermal pad to get off of the blue sticky stuff. Apparently it's it's pretty adhesive, but uh, next we're gonna be installing, I have to cut this to size. This one will install here. What we're covering here, if you're not familiar with the basics of the PCB, uh, VRAM, VRM's up here. We've got MOSFETs here and uh, inductors or chokes, if you've heard that word, same thing and then the capacitor bank over here. So we are covering with thermal pads, the MOSFETs, which pretty much become the hottest. They can withstand about 150C, well, depends. But 150C TJ Maxx is not unheard of for these things. Uh, so we're gonna put that there, that'll conduct with the plate. You'll see here that when I set this down, this channel in the plate is going to align with the inductors. Those will go in there. And then on this side, we've got the FETs contacting via the thermal pad. So that provides a thermal interface, which improves our transfer by, oh, God damn it. Why is there liquid on the table? Where did that come out of? Probably the tubes not fully connected or something. Oh, there's some, there's some drops on the tube right there. Yeah. Okay, so let me make sure that's fully sealed. really only a few points of failure for these so all right so i was saying uh yeah it all lines up we're gonna go ahead and put that second thermal pad on there need to cut it to size i need to make sure this kind of stays in place too which the pad and the tension should hold it all where i want it to be which is on top of that mosfet as we found out last time box cutters work pretty well for this i use my I fix a tray as a cutting board. Okay, sweet. Extra, always nice to have extra thermal pads. Oh, these are sticky, that's good. So position this where I want it, which is on top of the FET. Very nice. Man, that is so much better than what we were working with the other day. I'm not sure what the thermal conductivity is, but we will find out in testing how good the thermal performance is, which is really all that matters. Application though, far better than the Ice Wolf so far, just by using a better pad. Now this one for the FETs, or for, sorry, for the inductors. All right, nice. Very nice. Now the best part that everyone likes to talk about, thermal paste. Put a bit here in the middle. Oh, that comes out very fast. Okay, that should be, that should be ample. And just because it needs to be set every time, you can be a bit more generous with this thermal paste on a video card because that's the wrong way because you are 
uh, not dealing with an IHS like on a CPU. So don't be as concerned about that. So that's going to go right there. I think we've taken care of everything. We're not going to need the LED or the fan headers. So now it's just a matter of putting this down and then tightening it all. Okay. I have to polish that later, all those fingerprints. Okay, nice, nicely done, if I do say so myself. Now begins the emporium of screws. This is what they give you. It's a little bit overkill. And washers, little tiny washers. So this is actually a bit easier than they make it look. You need the 2.5 by four screw, which is that one, everywhere, and a washer with each one, ideally just to kind of prevent scratching and for spacing. And then there's going to be a, uh, a longer screw in the back, which is the five by six. That'll be the 2.5 by six. So 2.5 by six is what we're gonna be using for the uh, IO area once we get there. Need a screwdriver. washers. Okay, you want to make sure there's even pressure from all those to avoid cracking any silicon. Now we can start doing all the other ones. I think there's 13 screws in this step. Okay, if we could line up that would be great. Okay, there's your classic error. Don't screw everything in until you got them all in the right spot. Like don't, don't fully screw them down. So we're gonna go halfway on all these and then go through and finish them on the way. Have I mentioned that I hate washers? I never put this last screw and I always just use the DBI ones to hold this in place, but I guess we'll just go ahead and do it for this for sake of being complete. Nothing for that to mount into. <laughs> so these, if you really wanted to, you could use one of these little uh, washer nut things to go on the other side of the 2.5 by six screws or and secure them around that uh, that expansion plate, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to. Okay, so I think we're basically done here. Now uh, I could, well, actually, I guess we couldn't do that. I was going to say we could remount the back plate that comes with the card, but actually we can't. We would have to use uh, the other inset screws that it comes with to do that. What I will do just quickly is mount the rest of the um, IO shield though. All right, so we're done. This is the finished product. Just need to get it installed in the system and the loop, test it out. Why is that screw there? We need to we need to tighten these all down. Remember when I said we were gonna do them all halfway and then finish it at the end? Well, need to need to actually do that part. Okay, All right, let's try that again. So there we go, there's our finished product. Now with screws secured. It looks pretty good. Uh, we're gonna see how it performs, but I am definitely interested in this one. Uh, so we've got the full coverage, front side, complete with fingerprints that need to be wiped off. And then these will simply, as I already sort of demonstrated, simply connect to this after I've already mounted it to the system. So it's not quite ready yet. I need to mount it to the rest of the system first. But I am loving these quick releases because there's really no, we're not losing any liquid here, uh, which is great because that means better usability long term. No real need to refill, but there is a refill port on the giant radiator here, the XLC 280. So we could actually refill it if we needed to, uh, but we don't.
So this is what we end up with. We've got our CPU cooler, and we've got our GPU 1080 cooled by the block, and that cools the VRMs also. It's a pretty fun project. I don't know off the top of my head what this costs, but we'll be talking about that in the review. So I like to kind of uh, build these as blind as possible when I can. Quick thoughts, I suppose, throw these in here for once. They're all pads, far easier on this to work with than with the one I just worked with, the Alpha Cool. That's not to slight Alpha Cool and their Ice Wolf. It was a fine product, but small things here are a lot better. And those two main small things would just be, again, quick release and the thermal pads. <laughs> we'll see how it cools, though. I haven't tested it yet, but we've got a lot of work to do. So as always, Patreon link in the post roll video to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. We will have the review going up within a few days of this video. So do subscribe for that. Links in the description below for more information, including links to these products if you're interested, but do wait for a review before purchasing anything. They'll be down there though if you want them. I'll see you all next time.